So uh, for those who don't know um, what's being called the Digital Public Library of America, who don't know what it is, could you explain that uh, to us? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, we began with the title National Digital Library. We had a debate. Uh, we thought Digital Public Library of America would express more accurately what we had in mind. Uh, I say we. Uh, this is not like the Constitutional Convention that represents the American people in general. It's a group of people from foundations, computer scientists, librarians, scholars, uh, leaders of cultural institutions such as the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, the National Archives. Mm -hmm. um, we just constituted a group ourselves uh, to try to create this entity which we call Digital Public Library of America. In general what we have in mind is to create something as great or greater than the Library of Congress that would include the entire cultural heritage of this country and make it available free of charge to everyone. And by everyone, I mean individuals who just want to consult whatever it might be, but also institutions. So if we can succeed, this means that the smallest community college or the K in North Dakota or a K-12 uh, school in Alabama or uh, an old age retirement community would have access to a library greater than the Library of Congress. It would include all kinds of things, not just books, not just pamphlets, but um, digital collections that already exist that involve recordings, sound recordings, film, and so on. In principle, it would be everything that can be digitized. Now, this sounds very grand, and uh, we're at a stage now of trying to uh, make it feasible. So we're in a pragmatic stage of its development. We held a meeting actually this week uh, to discuss next steps. And um, I can explain that a little more fully if you like, but the general idea is to take this national asset, which is all of the collections in our great research libraries, amalgamate them, make them available in digital form, free of charge to everyone. It sounds like it would cost a lot of money. Uh, would there be funds available, available from the NEH or from philanthropists or? Well, financing is a major concern. Uh, I convoked a preliminary meeting of these people on October 1st here at Harvard. Uh, we met for two days, uh, and the people invited included the heads of major foundations. What was striking about this meeting is that I think within a half an hour, we all agreed that we could do it financially. Hmm. That is to say, um, the foundations, the really great foundations in this country would get together, create a coalition, commit themselves to providing a certain amount of money each year for X years to get the thing up. Um, now, of course, we have to define more clearly what the thing is. I mean, this general character I've already described, mm -hmm. but then you get into specifics that need to be explained. Still, I think everyone I've contacted from foundations has said, this is a great idea, this matters to the, to the American people, we want to help. So I really do believe that the money will be made available without going to Congress. I mean, Congress is not in a mood to be uh, financing something of, at this scale. Mm -hmm. And yet, it, this will be such an asset for the American people that I, I think the case for it is just self-evident. It's interesting, too, that already Norway has, uh, has a major national project like this. From reading you and others, Japan has something similar they're doing, France, the Netherlands. So are we a little bit behind the United States in getting this up I, and running? I think we are behind. I think that uh, it would have been desirable that we could have done it uh, 10, 15 years ago, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it now. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that so, some other countries have taken 
a great leap forward is helpful to us. We can learn from them. So we, we have a group here at Harvard, a kind of secretariat that is doing a lot of the preparatory work. This is part of the uh, Berkman Center? It's part of the Berkman Center, but it's got a grant from the Sloan Foundation. So we have a just a, a little core of an ad, ad administration pending a time when it might move somewhere else. And it, it, this is not a Harvard project, is what I'm trying to say. But we at Harvard provided a way to get things started. Uh, and uh, to also profit from other attempts to do this. We're not at all the first. Lots of people want to do it. So I, I'm trying to sound non-proprietary about it. But we, we did research on 21 other libraries in other countries. Um, they're very interesting. Uh, I think that the Netherlands, Norway are among the most promising, but there's also Europeana which is an attempt to create a, a digital library for all of Europe involving not just libraries but museums mm -hmm. and all kinds of cultural collections. Um, so we can, we can learn from them and of course they have experience in the financing of it. I mean it's very important to come up with realistic estimates as to cost. Um, but in this country too, you know, we've got huge digitizing projects like the Internet Archive Right. Yeah. So it's not as if we're starting from zero. Actually, we're starting from, I think, quite a strong base. And the Library of Congress has been wonderful in showing the way to coordinate various digital projects. So I think its, it's leadership is crucial. And right now, when you, when you go through Google Books, you see that a lot of materials with, had been scanned from Harvard, from, from maybe Widener Library, from Stanford's libraries, from the University of Michigan. Would it be possible to, do you think it's possible to, to uh, that, that the Digital Public Library of America could get access to those? I think right now it's about two million books yes. that Google Books has. Oh, it's definitely possible. These are books in the public domain. So uh, Google, uh, Google has already digitized about two million books that are books not covered by copyright that exist uh, in these four great research libraries, beginning with Harvard, Michigan, Stanford, the University of California. Um, and those works are now freely available online. So uh, they could become the part of the foundation of this uh, future library. Uh, but we would need the full digital files so that we can do word searches, the whole thing. Uh, you've probably heard of Hati Trust, uh, or perhaps mm. not. Well, Hati Trust. Uh, exists as a consortium of research libraries who have digital files done usually by Google and who have put these files together in a great database uh, at Michigan actually. Uh, this database could also be used as a part of the foundation of the National Digital Library. Mm. There is a great deal out there uh, and uh, there are there are also newspaper archives that are simply fabulous. Uh, as you know, the Library of Congress has amalgamated now um, all collections from all 50 states of newspapers, largely from the 19th century, but some mm. of them older. And it's a fabulous resource. So that could go into the beginnings of the national, or the I should say the digital public library of America. And then we would build on that foundation uh, I would imagine that it would be possible to re to do further digitizing in the great research libraries, uh, to bring everything up to 1923 when the copyright laws get very complicated. Hmm. For the period 1923 to 1964, um, the, the copyright status of many books and pamphlets and other works is problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where the so-called orphan book question comes into play, right. mm -hmm. and it's a huge problem. 